We begin this week on a mission to save the world, sort of anyway. It was November of last year when NASA launched its Double Asteroid Redirection Test, or DART for short. DART's mission is to alter the path of a harmless asteroid millions of kilometers away in a crash test. Planetary defense is like Earth science and space weather. It's one of those domains of science that really can have societal impact. These threats are real, and I think uh, what makes this time special is we can do something about it. The DART mission is human history's first of its kind. The craft will smash into the non-threatening asteroid at more than 22,000 kilometers per hour, which should be just enough to bump it off course and into the tighter orbit of its companion space rock. If successful, the $325 million kamikaze mission will show that Earth at least has a fighting chance should a real killer asteroid approach our planet on a collision course. In other news, NASA successfully completed a ground test of its Artemis moon rocket. Managers verified repairs to all the hydrogen fuel leaks that grounded two recent launch attempts. Once off the ground, the uncrewed Orion capsule atop the massive rocket would be the first to orbit the moon in half a century. The agency says its future crewed missions to the moon will set the stage for deeper space exploration to Mars and beyond. Also this week, and amid heightened tensions between the U.S. and Russia over the ongoing invasion of Ukraine, the two countries' space programs collaborated on a launch to the International Space Station. The crew of NASA astronaut Frank Rubio and cosmonauts Dmitry Patelin and Sergei Prokopiev shared two years of intense training leading up to the moment. And liftoff. They launched Wednesday from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan for what was Rubio's first space flight since becoming an astronaut in 2017. Rubio's mother watched from El Salvador. Just three hours later, the crew docked with the ISS, where Rubio expects to be in space for six months. Ignition. Meanwhile, private spaceflight company SpaceX launched another batch of its Starlink satellites into low Earth orbit. It was the sixth flight of the company's reusable Falcon 9 booster after bad weather grounded several attempts last week. Starlink is a global broadband internet service that aims to bring high-speed data to underserved parts of the world. Finally this week, NASA's Eye in the Sky, the James Webb Space Telescope, captured updated imagery of Neptune. Unlike images captured decades ago and even more recently by the Hubble telescope, this new image shows near-infrared wavelengths detailing the planet's turbulent and windy atmosphere. Arash Arabasadi, VOA News.